Hi, I'm Daniela Cavalletti, owner of Cavalletti Communications, a copywriting and book editing business. Congratulations on starting the journey of becoming an author. Being a published author is a major step in your success as a thought leader. I love books and the writing process. For over 20 years, I've been writing and editing. And for the last few years, I've worked very closely with Andrew Griffiths and his KPI groups across Australia and Singapore to help future authors, such as yourselves, create that thud value Andrew talks about. We had the privilege of editing over 25 of the KPI books, so we thought it would be helpful to put this video together to demystify the editing process. What's it all about? How does it happen? And why exactly would you need an editor? To help answer these questions, two of my editors are with me today, Paul Lonergan and Ella Legg. They're prolific writers, ghostwriters, as well as published authors. So they will be sharing their insights as they're not just editors, but also writers, who understand the hurdles, doubts, procrastination habits, and excitement you go through as an author. Paul, what tips do you have for aspiring new authors or people you know who haven't written very often? I think the key thing really is to have a natural voice, to have a, to have a way of talking so that your mm. reader can understand what you're trying to say. And the way to do that really is a process to my mind. And the KPI program actually does that really well. If you follow Andrew's webcasts and the program, you, the book will write itself in, in a lot of ways. What I mean by process is, is to go through and understand what your core message is. Mm. And you do that by looking at the program, by developing a really good pitch, by developing a great synopsis, put the work in, put the effort in, and, and that synopsis really makes sense. And then the other big thing, I think, is to have the mind map working for you. Because by doing the mind map, you, you really concentrate your thinking on the subject matter, the things that you're going to talk about, and it also forces you to think through uh, the chronology, if you like, of the book. My thoughts are write, write, and then write some more. <laughs> write regularly, write often. Don't overthink it. Don't self-edit as you write. Yeah. The more you get down, the better. And what you'll find is you'll come back and you'll have a wealth of information mm. that you can work with, you can edit it later. G'day, Ziggy here, author of Money Does Grow on Trees. And what I found is I just had to absolutely brain dump everything because everything was up here for me, but I just had to, had to brain dump everything and let the editors clean it up. What I found was that about 20,000 words I needed to push through it because I just got to a point where I thought I can't write anymore. It was starting to get a bit difficult, but just absolutely push your way through it and then let the editors take, uh, uh, take care of the rest. And you know when you read a book and you think, wow, that actually sounds good in the way that it's written. Well, that's how mine came out and that's how yours will come out. So the editor's job is to make it sound good and make us as authors sound good. So hey, I just want to encourage you, enjoy your day, get right in that book because it's a real game changer and the editors are a key part of the process. Have a great day, guys. Cheers. So what we're saying is, don't overthink it. Just follow the process, use your own voice, and the rest will follow. If you've got the great IP, got guidance, a book can almost write itself. Why would you need an editor? Well, I, look, I think there are two big reasons as to why you have an editor. And the, and the first is a, is a sort of an overview reason, if you like, you know, is have you answered the central message that your book is trying to get mm. out there? Uh, does the logic hang together of the book? Does it flow? And the second reason really is, you know, how, you know, grammar, spelling, all of those, <laughs> those silly little things that trap us all and trip yeah. us all over. You need to make sure that the sentences aren't too long. You need mm. to make sure that the paragraphs aren't, you know, way too long. You need to yeah. condense everything. You've probably used 30 words where 10 would do. Have you used the right words that you're actually looking for? There mm. are differences in, in the way that you can use the words. 
I think the other thing that comes into it is, is you know, does the whole thing flow as you want it to flow? And can you be proud of this book? Because a fresh perspective looks at this book with, with the reader's voice, if you like, you know, and, and you've got a book here that you've slaved over and you've worked hard on and you want it to be the very best thing that you can possibly get it to be. So an editor gives you, if you like, that confidence that you're putting out into the marketplace, something you can be proud of. Exactly. There are plenty of different techniques we can apply when we're editing someone's book. The most important thing is that we bring a fresh pair of eyes mm. to the copy. We see so many things that, as an author, you just simply can't see because you're too close to the manuscript. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Chunk it down. We talk chunks. We do, we do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think in this day and age of technology especially, we're so used to having short bursts of information that sometimes it's really hard for people to take in something that's much longer. I think that's a key point actually. We've retrained the way that we read. Yeah, our you brain know, works completely differently. We're all used to now reading on screens, so we, we jump at subheads and we jump at headlines. And this is what an edit can, editor can do to, to push that information into the book and make it readable in the sense of how people are reading these days. Absolutely, in short paragraphs, catchy headings, Sh active doing language. language. Lots mm. of verbs, lots mm. of, you know, and you will, and, and personalise the book too. Make sure that you personalise the information that you're putting out there. Put lots of you and I and that sort of thing. As Inclusive to, language. Yeah, Inclusive you know, language. we can be very generic in a, in a in formal, if you like, in a business book, and sometimes that just doesn't work for you. Well, I personally think the most important reason to have an editor is to get that extra pair of eyes, the outside view, because you, as the author, are far too close to your own story. I could be biased, but I think you'd be crazy to spend all that effort writing a book and not checking it. Because that's where an editor starts. What do you think, Paul? Well, I think that's true. I mean, you know, the difference between an edited book and an unedited book is, is often quite stark. You know, for example, the tone of voice might change mm. between this chapter to the, you know, the end chapter that you may have written three weeks later or things like that, uh, you know, an unedited book uh, can look a bit disjointed or when you read through it, it's a bit disjointed. And what an editor can do is really sort of pull all of that together, I think, and, and sort of make it, make it make sense for the reader because, uh, you know, one of the big things that an editor does is really act as the reader's uh, voice in this. You know, I want this information and I want it in this format and here's how I want to grab that, you know, material out of the book. So an edited book looks easy for the reader and that's half the battle I think. I think an unedited book just doesn't look finished. It You might have repeated an idea five different times and said it in different ways and sometimes you just need someone to come along and cut it back for you. So you've said that, you don't need to say it five different ways, five different times. Keep it simple, really. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And sometimes you can't see the duplications in your own copy. Mm -hmm. You're too close to it. Yeah. And um, especially when, you're, when you've written your book and you know, you've been through the blood, sweat and tears of writing the copy, um, you want something that comes out at the end that you really want to be proud of. Well, it's something that you're going to put out into the marketplace, into you know, perhaps in front of a client or you know, at a, at a conference or whatever it is, and you want something that you're fundamentally proud to deliver, and that you know, when people read it, they get the information that they need to get. If it's an unedited book, people will know, and you could be potentially professionally embarrassed. From my many years in book publishing and from talking to our many authors, moral support, having a sounding board and giving authors confidence are the key benefits of working with an editor. Having a connection with your editor is incredibly important. It's a relationship that's built on trust and openness. When you're working with an editor, they need to be able to tell it like it is. They need to tell you if an idea is working. If you just You've got to if challenge it, them, don't you? You've yeah, got to you've got to absolutely challenge them. You've mm. got to be. You've also got to be, as a, as a writer, you've got to be willing to take, take it on the chin yeah. if, if something isn't working. We're doing a nice way, though. We're, you know, absolutely, 
subtle, <laughs> Very subtle. fair but Very firm, friendly. firm but fair. Yep. Unless people do this for a living day in and day out, it is a very difficult thing to it's do. Tough. So something, having someone at your back mm. is, is a positive, I think. Yeah, definitely. So it's all about communication and it's all about support. It's very important you get a chance to talk to your potential editor to make sure you have that connection before you sign on the dotted line. What's really important when you choose your editor is, is that you gel with them. You're going to be spending a heck of a lot of time with them, yeah. whether it's on the phone, on the email, telling your story, refining it. And you're, you've, got a, you've got a relationship, you've got to build that relationship. They have to believe in your story. Hi there, I'm Dr. Leandra Walker, author of the two books Cosmopolitan Hippie, A Modern Girl's Guide to Being Healthy and Fabulous, and Eat Like a Cosmopolitan Hippie. Choosing the right editor for you is possibly the most important thing. I wouldn't really want to pick someone who is like my father's age for a book that I'm actually pitching to someone who's my age. An editor can be like your best friend, someone who really understands who you are and your voice. And that's the most important thing. An editor can help you get your voice across. Not their voice, not someone else's voice, not the voice of other people in your industry, but your unique voice. The thing with my editor was that by the end of the process, we'd become great friends. Not only was she around my age, a young mum, interested in the kinds of things that I'm interested in, but she also had friends who were like her too. She'd go the extra mile for me and ask them what they would want from my book. What would they like to see? What structures would they like? What questions do they want answered? And it also helped me flesh out some areas of my book and write a few extra things that people of my target audience want to hear. Being a first time uh, author, it was a very uh, concerning time for me. I didn't know whether I was going to get it right. It was not my world, uh, not my area of expertise at all. So very confused by all of the lingo that comes with running a, you know, writing a book. The editing process, uh, my editor was Paul Lonergan, uh, working in conjunction with Daniela, uh, but certainly Paul, put, again, put my mind at ease, um, told me, explained exactly the process, which I enjoyed the process, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, and I was also very much encouraged by the positive comments. When we're talking about editing a book manuscript, there are actually a number of different stages involved. That is sort of the technical part of what we do. Paul, can you give us a quick overview of what's in, involved, what you do? Mm -hmm. Quick overview is, uh, there's four main segments really. There's a structural edit, uh, which is where we look at really, does the book hang together as a, as a total? Is there a good introduction chapter? Is there a good sign-off chapter? Uh, do the chapters flow on from each other properly and so on? The stylistic edit is really the line by line thing where we go through and make sure that the language flows, that uh, you know, the grammar and the spelling and so on is, is all kosher and that the book per se hangs together from a writing perspective. Even experienced writers can gain huge benefits from a line edit or a stylistic edit. They can really help you to identify gaps and opportunities in your copy that will help make your book so much more accessible to your reader. People are really time poor these days, they don't have the patience to sit down and read the whole book. So come to the point, let me know what I need to know and make it easy for me to find that information. That's the subhead thing. I think mm -hmm. if you can, if your editor, and it should be an editor that does it, you create a, a subhead that encapsulates the coming paragraphs, yeah. then the reader can go through that and look at the subhead and go, ah, I know what this is all about. And then they read further into the paragraphs and they understand what you're, what you're talking about. And then you've got suddenly information that not only is core, but is simple to understand yeah. mm. and, and memorable. And an easy reference point for your readers. That's right. Yeah. The copy edit, you make sure that the, the tone and the manner and the voice is consistent throughout. The spelling is, you know, are you using American English or Australian English, depending on your market? Have we got rid of the business jargon, that sort of thing? And proofreading, the final part of the puzzle, if you like, is really that 
get rid of you know there and there you know, their books are different to there over there and those yeah. sorts of fundamental errors that do creep into every every single book really that's why a separate proofreader is so essential i think to writing a good book no look i agree I, it's, it's a fundamental strength so there are essentially four stages a structural edit a line or stylistic edit copy edit and proofreading Well, I hope our chat has been helpful. And if you have any more questions at all, please just drop us a line to pick our brains and get some advice. <laughs>